Hey everyone, Tim Coates, Silver Pascal Coder here. In today's video, we're going to go from this to this. So I'm going to show you uh, all of the um, events um, connecting to the API, formatting the JSON, getting out fields, and starting to d present a, an interface that we might be happy with. So let's get started shall we um, so I'm just going to exit the program go into uh, Lazarus here um, and work our way from there the other thing though but before we do start I just want to point out uh, one thing I forgot to mention um, last in the last video which is about FP FPC UX deluxe uh, I wish I could pronounce that and I wish I could even spell it. So um, let's go into my um, downloads folder here, uh, into there. Now, one thing I forgot, I neglected to mention here is that in the um, modules um, tab, there is an option here to do um, docking here. And that's what I use to single window appearance in the in my environment here. So um, then, when you do um, um, build it, well, um, you'll get you know the appearance that I have here. Um, the other thing here, you can also look at uh, the advanced settings. Um, I'm not going to go into in this video, but um, something else I forgot to mention. So, so basically, as I said, um, in this particular program here, we are using the um, Weather API here. There are lots of other ones, and we may look at uh, one more. Um, I'm not quite sure which is the best one, because when I uh, do compare different... Um, providers and compare them to what I might get from BOM. They can be slightly different when it comes to rainfall. I'm not quite sure why exactly, but that is to be considered. The main function here that I'm using to perform the, the retrieval of information using the API is here, and we are using a FPC HTTP client, and so we're not using any, let's say, third-party uh, tool. So you should be able to use it out of the box here. Um, I do have a bit of code here whereby um, with the um, icon to represent the weather, it begins with a double slash here. So um, I, I do actually add, prefix the URL with that if I need to. We get the URL and then make sure we're back at the beginning of the text for further processing later on. So given a URL, then we will be returning returning a stream and that stream then will be the response from the API. So when probably the best place to start here, well, let's look at how we get the weather. So again, here what we're looking at is um, the URL and we are getting a response. So really what we're going to be doing here is to build up the URL with which to ret um, retrieve the current weather. Um, the current weather URL will be um, api.weatherapi.com slash v1 slash um, current dot json question mark and then other parameters get tacked on to the end. So here what we're going to be doing is we then um, attach our key that we got when we registered with the service and then we do provide the location. Now the location doesn't have to, you know, can, um, does not have to be specified by name. It can also be specified using a latitude and longitude um, as well so just because you might not find the name doesn't mean it can't be used so with that URL then we can then get a response or you know issue the our request and get a response we can then process that response and then we can free this stream up 
So in processing the response, what we are going to do then is to um, take that stream, put it into or convert it to a um, JSON data um, object or so JSON data class in order to now from one of the uh, help files, you know, when it comes to processing um, JSON, it said that it is better to or prefer easier to use a an object to make access easier. So um, we are using we are going to be then you know from here on we are going to be using um, this JSON data as a JSON object and then process getting out certain parts of that and with those parts um, doing something with them. So we may as well uh, just run this program one more time so I can show you, you know, what we're doing here, you know, in the context of the program running. So basically this here is the formatted um, JSON text and you can see here that we have the um, location dot name so that will be this particular field here and that says Brisbane then what I'm also getting is the um, we're going into the current uh, field and within the current field we are going to go down into the condition and from the condition we are going to get both the text and the icon. Now the icon you'll see here is, you know, I'll just read it out to you, is cdn.weatherapi.com um, slash 116.png. So this is an image. Now the image is what we're seeing on the right hand side here. Um, and then also we are using the temperature now the temperature here is in Celsius and I'm displaying it over here as 23.3 um, degrees C uh, and you've also got just underneath that the temperature in Fahrenheit as well. So to get these individual properties um, here we look at we're using the JSON object and then we can use the find path method to drill down into the element or the property that we are can, um, want to use and then we can you know convert the result of that to a string or in the case of the temperature we can make that into a double we can forget about these two lines here because they're just going into the left hand side that was only when I was debugging so now that we've got the um, icon here, which is again here, I want to display that on the in, within my program here. And to do that, I'm going to call the um, load. I'm going to do a request to the Weather API service. Um, get the image in a string stream. And that string stream we will, you know, load into the picture here and then get rid of that response. So, because again, the, this pit, this uh, URL here starts with a double slash. Um, that's why here, if the URL starts with that, then we will shove in a HTTPS on the front of it. So now that we've got um, all these fields here of interest and we've got our um, image here, the next thing to do is to, you know, create our, um, so let's just go back into here. The next thing to do then is to populate our controls over here. So what I've done then is to, I've got a, a location label and let's just call it a weather label part where you can see the text you know partly cloudy and 23.3 degrees 
so we will now and also you'll see that this text here then is within a panel and the panel is using a gradient fill from sky blue to deep sky blue so we're going to close this part down now for the moment and in order for you know to in order for us to let's say get that particular sort of appearance then uh, we here we have our image our location label and our weather label now these two labels here I have you know set them to be full width and I also set the alignment for the text to be centered and that's why they appear there similarly I will then um, take these controls here and we can then align the centers horizontally and that makes sure that they are all down the middle as we want them to so it creates um, a nice visual appearance for the end user um, and here like I said you can see on that second line there we are taking that condition text which was from the API and then we convert our uh, temperature into um, something that's user friendly there as always because we are um, getting an object here or memory is being used here we want to free it here so we should also maybe be using some exception handling or try finally type code here but you know at this moment this is just a demo program now um, the next part to consider here in the running of the program is that when the um, when the form is created um, I'm basically by just clearing the caption here um, it's almost making that text invisible we're going to make sure that the both the location label and the weather label are both going to be bold white text so this again is visible to the user when you know it is retrieved and loaded now in order for us to be able to you know get this gradient appearance on the panel um, we have to use well I have to use um, the if we go onto the panel and into the events you will find that there is an on paint event and within the on paint event you know we'll go into the canvas and in the canvas we do a gradient fill and it expects a number of parameters here um, we'll look, come to this one here in a minute but we're basically talking about the starting color ending color and the direction for the gradient the first parameter here is a rectangle where you are specifying the rectangle that will be used for the gradient fill and in doing that uh, when the program is executed here again and we'll just wait for it to appear here you can see that we are like I said going from that um, you know this between these two shades of blue here another way you could do it you know in which is what I'm thinking about is uh, depending on the time of day having using different colors so I could use blue for if it was a clear day if we're at sunset or round sunset I could go to an orange red uh, maybe a you know a, 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 some other colors for the evening um, just something to make it visual so if you can imagine now you know you don't see the um, maybe go that way if you don't see the uh, memo there and all you can see is the entire screen blue you are starting to get to something which you might you know which I would consider you know pretty cool to look at so um, we'll close that down here and we'll do a quick um, run through this program once more because there isn't that much to it you know when you think about it um, what we've done here is to um, we're using a FP HTTP client to um, download and to you know get a response from a service a weather service here that response we convert into or gets returned as a string stream
in the case of the image, we can then um, push or load that um, load from that stream into an image through the picture property. And again, because we are getting an object back from that request, we need to free that as well. Um, the data which we do get from the API is formatted as JSON text, but what we're doing is using the find path to specify the properties that we're interested in. And once we've got those values, we can then present them to the user again before freeing the data. Um, our weather app is progressing you know, sl um, slowly, but it's moving ahead. And I hope that you are able to get something from this video. And until next time, happy coding, and I'll see you next time. Bye.